We'll move on now and show the results of writing some more specialized scripts. First, um, we load in some data through a menu. This is a, uh, some data in the outline format. Here, we're going to show hierarchical data, which is particularly well suited to multi-scale environments, since we can represent the nodes deeper in the hierarchy as being smaller. In this example, a hierarchical text file format is parsed and loaded in this way so we can display a very large outline with only a small amount of screen space. By zooming in, we can see the details of the outline. We attach simple scripts to the text objects so that clicking on an object zooms in so that object appears across the top of the screen. We can also use the keyboard to move back and forth between objects. In fact, we now use this tool for giving talks instead of using overheads or slides. If we look in here, we see an image. And you can see that while we were navigating, the image was rendered at low resolution. But when the image does not change for a minute, it refines and is drawn at higher and higher resolutions. This demonstrates the general notion of refinement that is part of Pad++. In order to keep the frame rate high, the system is drawn at a lower resolution while animating, and the details are filled in when it sits still for a short while. If we look over here, we'll see a visualization of a directory structure. Here, we represent each directory and subdirectory as these two, with an open frame, and each file by a colored square, where the color represents the file type. If we zoom in enough, it loads the contents of the file directly into the square. As we zoom out, you can see where we were in the original image. We now zoom into the area labeled, hypertec labeled hypertec Hypertext Markup Language, or HTML. Before you saw hyperlinks, but here we show a more general notion of hypertext by using HTML, the language that NCSA's Mosaic uses to describe graphical hypertext files. With standard hypertext, following a link brings up a new window with the data or sometimes replaces the data in the existing window. This can cause confusion because the semantic relationship between windows is not represented graphically. In Pad++, though, there is only one very large page. Here, when a link is followed, the new data is loaded in and placed off to the side and made smaller. Here, you can see what the result of me clicking several different links. This way, you can see the relationship between links graphically. The layout algorithm always leaves enough room so that an arbitrary number of links can be followed at any level without overlapping. So now we can zoom in and find more hot places that we want to click on and find more and more links, and so on and so on. There is a special interaction of shift-click, which brings you back one link to the previous level. To help navigate through the hypertext, or any other data for that matter, we can bring up a menu for content-based search. We can type in any text and get a list of all objects having that text. Here, we type in face, the text that we had started out this demonstration with. If we press return, it'll tell us all of the items, text items on the pad surface that have the text face in them. You see, most of them are interface. But here's the one we want, face. If we double click on this, it will navigate us to the um, item the corresponding item on the surface. As we zoom out, you can see again where we are in relationship to the entire Pad++ surface. This notion of zooming in and out is a natural way for maintaining a sense of context and relationship between objects on the Pad++ surface. Finally, we show an implementation of lenses that you may have seen demonstrated by a research group at Xerox Park. A lens is an object that alters the way things look when seen through the lens. Here is a very simple example that changes the color of a line when seen through it. One lens, turns the line, one lens turns the line green, and the other lens turns the line blue. A more interesting example here shows that an object can be rendered entirely differently through a lens. On the right, there is some data that is represented by two columns of numbers. However, Looking at the same data through one of these lenses draws it as a scatter plot. Another lens represents the same data as a bar chart. We think this can be a very useful teaching aid as it helps to make the notion that there can be multiple representations of the same underlying data more intuitive. 
but lenses can go even a bit further. In addition to changing the way things look with lenses, they can also change the way you interact with objects. Here is a simple object that represents a number between 0 and 9. You can change its value by typing a number with a keyboard. However, dragging this lens over the number represents that same data as a slider, and you can change its value with the mouse. In fact, since there is only one piece of data there, if we move the lens a bit off, then we can see that moving the slider or typing in numbers with a keyboard changes the same underlying data. Here is another lens which looks at the same data and renders it as a dial, again, with which we can interact. In conclusion, PAT++ is an effective tool for exploring interfaces and visualizations based on zooming. We believe that zoomable or multi-scale interfaces provide effective mechanisms for addressing the problems of navigation through large data spaces. The goal is to provide simple methods for visually navigating that ease the burden of locating information while maintaining an intuitive sense of location and of relationships between information objects. We are developing PAD++ here at the University of New Mexico with collaborators at New York University and at Belcor in Morristown, New Jersey. If you are interested in more information, you can contact me directly via email at betterson at cs.unm.edu. Let me just zoom in a bit so you can see that a little bit better.